What is up guys? Welcome to today's video. It's a little different than what I'm usually used to making and you guys are used to watching. But a lot of you guys that are new to the channel don't know that I have this beautiful bus here and it's converted into an RV. I travel the country in it and it's been such a blessing. It's allowed me to go so many beautiful places and do so many beautiful things. So I'm just going to go over it real quick with you and help all of those out there that are trying to do a conversion. Maybe give you guys some tips let you know what I would do differently, what I would keep the same, and just save you guys some trouble down the road because I wish I watched more videos before I went in and started building out a bus. Let's start off with the outside here. Everything's the same. I took the stupid mirrors off, but I painted the bus because when I tried to go into Mexico, they wouldn't let me in. They thought I was a school bus, and I tried four different border crossings, got turned down each time, so I then did this paint job, and you know, it's not, showroom quality, but it does look 100 times better than the yellow that was once on the bus. And I basically just rolled it on, fine foam roller. I did the prep work, that took about two days, and then the paint took about two days as well. I did two or three coats, and you can look up uh, foam rollers. I'll put a picture on the screen. Actually, I have some right here. These are like little foam rollers, you can see. That's how I painted the whole bus. And I would do it all over again, brushing it on or spraying it on, that would be too much work. With the roll job, you can kind of tape everything off pretty quickly and just get right to it. Um, one main thing that I would recommend is when you're rolling it on, roll really light coats on and do it really slowly because if you do it too thick and too quickly, it'll create bubbles. I just used uh, some rust oleum, protective enamel, and it's oil-based. And I cut it down with, I guess, acetone a little bit and just thinned it out. And then I threw it on this bus and it looks 100 times better. And then I was able to get into Mexico. Also, another thing I did is register as an RV because I was getting harassed um, at the border as well because it was just registered as a bus and they thought that was a commercial vehicle. So had to paint it, had to register as an RV. And then I was good to go to cross the border. So if you guys are looking to go into Mexico or Canada, make sure you get the RV stuff done. And it's different in each state. Some states require you to have four things or five things or six things done to it. And in Pennsylvania, they're really strict. So I went to California. They also are pretty particular, but I believe they just require a bed, a sink, a stove, maybe a toilet and some other stuff. You'd have to look it up. But I went to California, got it done pretty painlessly. It's officially registered as an RV and that's also easier to get insurance that way as well. So, that's that. Let me show you guys the inside. Oh, there it is. In all its beauty. Now, let me show you what I would do differently. Let's start with the floor. I got this laminate flooring here. It's supposed to look like real wood and you put it in in different little pieces. They're all separate and you cut them to size and blah, blah, blah. Similar to a hardwood floor. But the reason I went with this is because it's much thinner, much lighter. And I didn't want to lose the extra height because I'm tall and I wouldn't want to drag my head on the ceiling. I was a little worried about the durability, but it's been over two years now and I've been abusing the floors. I got dogs in the bus. I've had a dirt bike strapped in the middle of my living room right here and the floors are holding up great. So I'd recommend that. Speaking of the floors, I didn't insulate the floors because like I said, I'm tall and I couldn't do so without losing the height and I bought the bus because I wanted to be able to stand when I, when I cook, when I clean, whatever, whatever I do, I wanted to be able to stand without having to be all crouched down. So unfortunately, didn't insulate the floors, kind of sucks, but if you're on the shorter side, I definitely recommend insulating the floors. And as far as insulation goes, I have one inch foam boards in all of the walls and up by the bed and stuff. And that does a pretty good job but I did skip the ceiling insulation, which was a big no-no. I didn't want to get into ripping all of these rivets out and this metal out to get to the insulation. And it is insulated from the manufacturer, but as you can guess, it's probably just crappy insulation of some sort. I don't even know what's in there. But if I wasn't rushing and if I didn't cut corners, I would have insulated the ceiling. And I didn't think it would make much of a difference, but Patrick, my buddy, has the same size bus as me, and we drove down to Mexico on a road trip together. 
and he insulated his ceiling with the top of the line, newest insulation they got on the market. And the entire trip, I was hanging out in his bus the whole time because my bus was a sauna and his bus was relatively cool because that insulation on the ceiling really did save a lot of hassle and a lot of misery that I had to endure and that I have to endure now because I cut that corner. So definitely, definitely, definitely insulate everything in your van or your bus as best as you can with the best possible insulation. Don't buy the cheap stuff, get the good stuff. Promise you, you won't regret that because I kind of do. See, look at this. I'm already dragging my, my little on the ceiling. So imagine if I put insulation in the floor. I even kept the first aid sticker up on this thing. This compartment's just all my dry food storage and I didn't really care to take all that off. It's kind of cool. It reminds me that I'm in a school bus. We got over here all of my beautiful magnets of all the places that I've been able to explore in the last two years. And this is only like a fraction. I don't get magnets everywhere I go, but if it's a really special place, like Yosemite or whatever, I will get the magnets and pop them right there. But I got this sick white buffalo. Boom, some fan of mine met me at a waterfall that I was cliff jumping at and gave that to me. So thank you for that beautiful white buffalo. Let's go to the cabinets here. They look great, I dig them, but I would totally discourage anybody building a van or a bus to put a full size cabinet in there because look at this, look how much space I have lost. It's basically a quarter of all of my space taken away by this unnecessarily large cabinet. It's rad, I get, to, I get to cook and have all the space I need and wash dishes and all the space I ever could want, but I am taking away from other living area that I could have had. So what I would recommend and what my buddy Patrick also did in his bus is he has a half a cabinet. And so just imagine this, boom, cut in half, smaller stove, just a small, just a slightly smaller stove, smaller sink, and you could have the sink and the stove, boom, right next to each other, boom, cut it in half right here. You have this whole extra area that you can do whatever you want with. You could put a shower in there. You could also put a seat right there, and that would be great because I didn't, look at this, nowhere for passengers to sit. I didn't take into account that I'm gonna have friends traveling with me and stuff. And where do they sit? I have like this fold out chair that I put right there. And that's not good. So if you could put a seat right there or something, people could hang out in here, people could eat dinner in here, all that good stuff. So cut the cabinet size down as much as possible. Don't go buying the full size cabinet like I did. Underneath the cabinet, I'm not going to show you because it's so messy, but underneath the cabinet, I started off with a six gallon tank of water for my sink. And it's just a simple water pump running from down there underneath the cabinet to my battery bank. And it does great. You switch it on and off when you want to use it. But the six gallons wasn't quite enough. So I got another six gallon tank. So now I have 12 gallons of water that I can just last pretty long with. And in Mexico, it was useful because it's hard to fill up water sometimes when you're out in a different country or in the middle of nowhere, kind of like where I'm at now. So I could probably go two weeks with the amount of water that I have here, or even longer, depending on how much I'm washing dishes or how much I'm using that water to make coffee or mate or food or whatever I'm doing. So that all depends, but put a big water tank in there. 12 gallons is plenty for what I use my water for. Baco! Hello! Where have you been? I was worried sick about you. I'm trying to make a video, Pac. Can you run away like that? I don't like that too much. No, no, no. <laughs> He's a little rascal, a little wanderer, just like his father. And Diesel here. He's my new pooch. I got him in Mexico when I was driving around the bus. A both rescue dogs and they are just so appreciative of that. Follow me everywhere. Anyway, back to the vlog. But don't disrupt the vlog again, please. So, cool. So the stove, propane stove, I'd recommend that. I've seen electric stoves and all that, but I wouldn't want to have to rely more so on electricity because propane is way easier to come by. 
than sunlight sometimes, especially, you know, if there's a storm rolling in or if there's two weeks worth of cloudy days, then you're gonna be without food and cooking. So, propane stove, I would do that all over again. Propane heat in here as well, I would do that all over again too. Next step, let's go to the refrigerator. This one here is a very new refrigerator to me. And in the past, when I first made this video, I just had a mini fridge I bought at like Home Depot. And it went in here in this cabinet. And I had so much trouble with this fridge. It would just drain my battery bank so quickly. And if I didn't have sunlight for more than two days, I would have to go and buy a cooler and ice to keep my food cold. This thing right here, this is the Medic, and this thing is meant for exactly this. RVs, solar panels, all that good stuff. So it basically runs off of little, very, very, very little energy. And I should have gotten one of these from the start. It took me getting a second mini fridge because I thought the first one was just crappy and that it was just consuming too much power. So I went and bought a better, more expensive mini fridge at Home Depot. And that thing still did the same thing, just ate all of my power. And then I was like, oh, I gotta up my battery bank. So I bought more batteries, spent hundreds of dollars on my battery bank, and that still wasn't enough. So then I got this beautiful Dometic right here. Like I said, it is meant for this particular setup solar, low energy, well insulated, and I've only had it for a few weeks, but it is epic. I actually got it right when I came back out to my bus and my battery bank was completely drained. So they send you um, a cigarette lighter adapter and you can just plug this thing right in to your cigarette lighter up front in your car and it'll run off of that for a long time. So that's great, it's a good backup. So let's say you got no generator, you got no backup, energy of any sort and back stop that and let's say there's a forest fire so the whole area is just smoky for weeks which has happened to me you got a forest fire you got no sun you have to plug this thing in to your cigarette lighter and you can do that no problem and that's why I have it out I can just pop it right up plug it in up there and then I'm good to go for days and days and days. And you know, you just run your engine every once in a while to recharge your batteries. But it's nice to have it on the solar panels, not have to worry about it. And ever since I plugged it back into the solar panels, I've, I, I've just left it. I haven't had to check the batteries or worry about using all of my capacity up, all of my electricity up. I got electricity for days with this thing. So definitely check out the Dometic. Paco is not included with that, but Boom, Dometic right there. And it's actually, it opens from the top, which is sick. Paco, open, let me open it, let me open it. Super durable, cause you can lift the puppy up while it's on top. And uh, yeah, you got your cage in there. You can fit a lot of stuff, woo. And what's really cool is it hooks up to your phone. It has an app and it can pretty much shut itself off once your battery's drained to a certain level so you don't damage the batteries and it'll warn you give you alerts or whatever that you need to charge your batteries or do whatever but I've, i haven't had to uh, deal with any of that yet so that's cool that's the main upgrade that i've had also this is the second main upgrade that i've had in the bus hi little paco he wasn't along with me at first was you know <laughs> all right so i'm gonna give you guys a quick little overview of my battery bank it's a mess down here i'm not very organized but i started off with these two sealed batteries they're still going strong but because i had that issue with the fridge the old fridge consuming so much power i got this big battery and i was on the road when i got it the dude at the store only had the whatever type of battery this is it's a deep cycle battery but it's not sealed so these things open up and you have to fill them with water every once in a while which is a huge pain. But the worst part is when you're traveling, when you're driving around on the road, it spills all of that battery acid out. This has been eating away at the wood and stuff. So make sure you guys buy the sealed deep cycle batteries for your solar system, not that type. Sealed, sealed, sealed. 
I messed up. That's the inverter. My first inverter was quite expensive and it actually caught fire while I was in the bus luckily. So that was scary. I don't know why it wasn't my fault because I had it for quite a while and no problems and then one day it just overloaded and bam, fire. So I was on the road, I couldn't really have anything shipped to me because you know, I, yeah, I don't have an address, I'm driving around. So I bought that at Harbor Freight, it's cheap and it does a great job and it hasn't caught on fire yet. So thumbs up, Harbor Freight. Eww. The controller, that's the charge controller. That's a new charge controller because my old charge controller actually malfunctioned and this port right here like burnt away and I was in Mexico and then I lost all my solar so I had to buy this in Mexico which was a huge pain. Save you guys some trouble. This was my old charge controller. As you can see here, let me get in the light. This right here, I don't know if you can tell by this port right here but this burnt. It like melted. I had it for quite some time and then just one day, boom, fried. Bought this on Amazon, it's made by Renogy. Same company that made my solar panels and I love my solar panels, they work great, but I wouldn't recommend this charge controller just because it happened to me, it might happen to you. And it was on the cheaper side. So spend the extra money, get a good inverter, get a good charge controller so you don't burn down your beautiful home. And you don't want that to happen, right, Pac? Nope. So, get that foot out of your eye. This is my bed, speaking of which, there's plenty of room for your dogs, your girlfriend, whatever you might have. This is a full XL, so it's bigger than a regular full. It's almost the size of a queen. Or maybe it is a queen, I don't know, it's massive. That's another thing that I would change. When I was building the bus, I had a girlfriend at the time, and I thought, let's have a huge bed, because you spend half of your life in bed, right? You sleep all the time, at least I do. So I just went with a monster's bed, and that was the dumbest thing I could have done. Because now I don't have a girlfriend, now I just have Paco, and Paco doesn't take up much space. He cuddles pretty well. When you put a bed that takes up literally half of the whole bus, then you are left with very little space to do other stuff like have your friends hang out in here or whatever it might be. So that's the biggest regret in this entire build was putting a giant bed in. Not a good idea. And talking about Patrick some more, in his bus he put just a nice little tiny mattress in the very back of the bus and he's got so much more room. He's got a huge closet right there and I believe he put a composting toilet in that closet now, and he's got a stove and uh, an oven and everything you could have imagined because his bed is smaller. And what he did to compensate, like, oh, what if I have people that want to sleep over or whatever, he put a couch right here, but the couch breaks down into a guest bed, which is sick, and he can fit two people in that guest bed, but. It also, like I said, folds up into a chill area where people can sit and hang out. So that's another reason why we hung out in his bus the whole time in Mexico, because I don't have anywhere to chill and hang out with friends in my bus. So think that through before you don't put anything here and put a giant bed in. What I did was put this table, flips up, bam, and then there is this leg that comes down, that was hard to do one-handed. And this table has been rad, I edit my videos here, I eat here sometimes. This table has been nice because it's like my office space and Patrick just has kind of a couch there where my table is so he doesn't really have an office space but he does have a chill space so you gotta figure out what is important to you and what you're gonna use most in your setup because there is limited space, you can't have everything, but you can have a lot, so just plan wisely. I would keep the table. Maybe what I would do differently is just have a half a table and then have a seat of some sort here built in so people can hang out, sit, or whatever. I don't know, I would do the layout a little bit differently for sure, but the main thing is smaller bed, 
I would probably still keep it high. It does get hot sometimes, heat rises obviously. Maybe put a fan in your vent, definitely do that. Suck that hot air out that's sitting on the ceiling. Um, Patrick's bed is lower in the back, so he doesn't have all the storage that I have, and my storage is just never ending. I have so much storage, too much storage really. Got a crock pot, my battery bag, all of my fun stuff. I got a surfboard back there, got longboards back there, snowboards back there, and food for days on this top shelf. So plenty of storage space, and that's important. I would probably recommend putting the bed up high like I did so you can store as much as you want underneath. Bed, smaller. Cabinet, smaller. Have a seating area for your friends somewhere. Go with the Dometic fridge, not a typical mini fridge. Get good solar panels, get a good solar charger and a good inverter. All of those things are pro tips and I've learned the hard way. So don't make the same mistakes that I've had to deal with. Oh, everyone asks me, what about a toilet? What are you gonna do? Or what about a shower? I would never wanna go without a shower for more than a day. Well, you probably shouldn't live in a vehicle if you're worried about a shower every single day or twice a day, because that's just one of the luxuries of living in a house that you don't really get in a vehicle. You can, you can have a shower, um, and a lot of people do, but even they have very limited water supplies, so the showers are really short and sweet. The composting toilet thing is a great idea. And I've run into some people living in their vans and their buses and they have composting toilets and they don't smell and they're really well contained and I'm actually impressed. And the original reason I didn't put a toilet in here is because I didn't want to deal with all of the human waste and the smell and all that. But it's really not that bad from seeing other people do it and I'd probably recommend it. They're expensive though, like over a grand for one of those toilets and now I don't really have a spot to put it and I haven't needed one and I've been totally fine without it. Not bad at all, you know, it's, it's just one of those things you uh, learn to live without. And the shower thing, I haven't showered in probably a week. I went swimming the other day in the lake with some biodegradable soap, so that counts, right? But that was freezing and what I would do for a hot shower right now is probably more than you wanna know about. What I might do in the future is put a water tank in the back, right where that surfboard is, and they actually have these little contained units that you just plug in the one pound propane tanks into. And then the whole unit does everything. It, it sucks the water out, it heats the water, and then you just have a shower hose and I would attach it to the back of my bus door. So when I swing that bitch open, I have a beautiful, warm, stream of water flowing down hitting my face so i might do that and i talked to my buddy i think they're like 300 bucks for one of those units so well worth it if you have the space and if showering is a priority which it should be i am a dirt ball but i do like to be clean so if you don't want to shower in the rivers if you don't want to smell bad around all of the people that you don't run into because you're in the middle of nowhere camping um, but if it's something that's a priority, make sure you plan for that. Put that shower somewhere. You can definitely do it. It's been done. I just didn't go that route. And that wraps it up. This video is almost complete. Thank you for watching. Um, and make sure you subscribe. Check out my other videos, all my adventures, and I will link the original bus conversion video here and I'll put it in the description below for you guys that want to watch that. I did the whole conversion in 11 days, which is way too fast. So take your time. I had a rush, but catch you guys later. Thank you for watching and good luck on your conversion.